this half term I've had a lot of fun with year one and year two children um, developing their understanding of algorithms and debugging and also evaluating their algorithms looking for the best one um, so in this little video help file I just want to talk you through some of the things that we did um, and there's some planning which goes with this on my website as well so there we go um, now, because they hadn't actually used the B-Bots much in reception or previously, we did lots of open-ended play. Um, we had at least a couple of sessions where the children designed their own um, play activities around using the B-Bots. Um, and they developed things like homes that they made, made out of bricks. They got B-Bot to go into the home and then come back out again. Could B-Bot go in and come out without hitting the bricks? Um, some of the children decided to get B-Bot to see if they could make him dance, or her dance, I should say. Um, they built tunnels out of chairs. They told stories about B-Bot. They had quite a lot of fun with that. Um, and as part of this, we also had a, a little, little slightly more sort of semi-formal things where we gave them little tasks as well. You know, could you get Bebot to go up to the wall and, and get as close to the wall as you possibly could and, and then come back again? Or um, can you have a look at the, use these counters and see if you can work out how, how far Bebot goes? Okay. Um, or let's use the counters to work out how much Bebot turns each time. Um, and do they all turn the same amount each time? And can we model that? That was quite fun as well. Uh, as part of this, we also got the children to tell us about what all the different buttons did and describe those, um, which was lots of fun. And then we moved on to, to making our own Bebot world. So we, um, I uh, uh, drew out some grids. Uh, 15 centimeter grids on some sugar paper and we started off by talking to the children about giving Bebot its own home first um, and we, we we decided which way round Bebot would be allowed to face um, and some of the children said that he should go diagonally so we, we tried Bebot to see whether he actually went from square to square when he went diagonally which is quite useful because <laughs> of course the, the distance across the diagonal is um, is, is longer so he doesn't get to the next square so we decided he had to go either um, vertically or horizontally <coughs> and the children you can see in the picture there they coloured in their Bebot homes which was fun um, and then we let the children choose a whole um, set of locations and the only things we said to the children about their type of locations was that they shouldn't be adjacent right next to each other they could be um, they could connect via the diagonal but they couldn't connect directly adjacent um, <coughs> and we got the children first of all to sort of write those in on pencil and quite a few of them struggled with that and, and, and made mistakes which is great and we got to talk about debugging and the fact that it's okay to make mistakes and in, in a nice sort of gentle introductory um, thing just to just to take away all that fear of failure away from things really um, so they planned their locations and they coloured them in, which was fun. And then we added roads to our system. Um, and it actually wasn't too difficult in terms of diagonal roads because they'd already got that idea from, from talking about Bebot's home direction in the first place. Um, and then we encouraged the children to put on some extra map features. And we said things that you think might slow boy bot down so they came up with other things like traffic lights and all sorts of other bits and pieces um, and that was quite fun we sort of put all those things in there and then we gave the children we said well okay let's let's get you to just design some routes for Bebot to travel you know let's go from can you get Bebot to go from the shop to the, the garage or could you go from the shop to the school um, and then of course you get a little bit more complex and you might say well okay <clears throat> you've got to go to these places but you've got to keep on the roads now um, or you might say well you've got to go to the shop um, from um, the garage but you're not allowed to go directly there. You've got to go um, to the school first. And the children had lots of fun um, just designing those those courses. Um, the things we really helped the children in this case is we we got them to so we we gave them the instructions that if they input a set of instructions into Bebot, 
they were not allowed to touch Bebot until the program had ended. Uh, and this came about because we noticed quite a few children punching in really, really quickly instructions without actually really thinking about their roots. Um, but by making them actually wait until the Bebot had done all of the instructions, it just made them think a lot, lot, lot clearly, more clearly about the set of instructions. You only need Bebot to go wandering across the class and you have to follow him, as opposed to actually pick him up and turn him off or do anything to, to encourage you to actually think about your route a bit more. Uh, and we also encourage the children to take it in turns, which I think is important. Um, and then we st used um, these algorithm cards um, and we've got quite a good sort of structure with this. Um, often the children work in an either twos or threes, mostly pairs. Um, and the first child would design an algorithm for, to go from one place to another, uh, their choice. And then the second child would input exactly what cards were put down. And we did in the early days, we had children leaving out things like the go card or the clear card but still punching those in so we made the children really we watched out for that and, and stopped them actually pressing those those buttons if somebody hadn't put the card down and then what we also felt discovered was really helpful is getting that first child to actually put their finger on the card that was actually being played out by the um, Bebop program so as Bebop did a turn right then the child would put the finger on the turn right in their algorithm and that was incredibly useful if there was a problem in the in the actual algorithm because they could then spot where it got wrong oh dear my fingers on the turn right and, and Bebot's turn left instead okay so that was good did lots and lots of root work um, with that and sometimes we did open root work which which didn't involve uh, using the roads and with those children a little bit further on we, we encourage them to use the roads and to use some of the map features as well the pauses and all of those things and that was a lot of fun um, then we asked the children well which which route is the best and they came up with things like uh, the, the it, it could be the fastest route you know or the longest route or the least cards or the least turns or the number of straights and um, what I had done is gone and drawn um, two routes on on each of their maps um, and drawn them with different colors and, and specifically made sure I'd gone right through the middle of each of each square um, and then what they did is start to investigate these using different things. So for the distance, we used 15 centimeter strips of card, um, which they put down and they recorded that onto, onto, a, um, onto a recording sheet um, so they could compare the different routes. Um, and you can see another one here, um, evaluating the distance using the card. That was probably the easiest one for, for, for the children to do. Um, and then some of them, actually nearly all of them did uh, in, in year two, did the number of instructions as well. Um, so they put down the cards to work out. It was interesting watching my most high-flying groups that instead of putting down the cards, after a while they were literally just picking up Bebot and almost putting Bebot into its place and counting each instruction, which sped that up quite, quite considerably. And that was fine for them. They, they understood exactly what they were doing. Um, and then because some of them had also come up with time, um, the class teacher did a bit of work on helping the children um, use um, stopwatches as well. Um, and probably about half of the class in year two had a go with the stopwatches as well. Which was um, which was fun, and then we extended this a little bit uh, later. With uh, I put counters down onto their uh, Bebop maps, and we said to them, "Well, okay. First of all, let's start Bebop at um, or Bluebot in this case. So let's start Bluebot in Bluebot's home, and let's do a let's just have a. You've only got nine cards, and what's the most amount of counters that you can pick up and um, that was that was quite interesting watching them sort of planning out all the different routes um, we certainly found that the, having lots of cards were really helpful for that and some children would sort of put plan out every single route on the map to work it out as well um, 
well, then we asked, well, what if you could start anywhere on the map? Do you think you could pick up more counters? And that was quite interesting as well, looking at getting the children to sort of think through, well, why is that a better position to start from? Um, we did think that you could extend this using number cards as well. So you could put a set of numbers down and you could see who, who, um, how, what the maximum or the highest number you could pick up. Or, or conversely, you could have lots and lots of numbers and could you, could you traverse the map and pick up the smallest amount, uh, the smallest total. So that worked really well as well. Um, just to say that the planning is here. Um, uh, in, in some detail and also those cards that you've seen on the on the um, uh, previous um, slides here as well and finally just to mention that I do have a um, primary uh, programming book coming out quite soon with uh, a full key stage to uh, scratch scheme of work I think there's over 20 uh, modules and it's the type of thing you could dip into to supplement your planning that you're using already or choose a whole strand and use that as well. And I've really enjoyed writing the first chapter on how to teach programming, which has been something I've thoroughly enjoyed this year. So I hope this has been useful and thank you.